Hello everyone, this is Dean from Motion Media and today we're going to take a look at Z buffers and um, how to use them in Photoshop and After Effects and also how to create one manually. The reason for this is that uh, while most all renders offer the various render layers including Z buffers, they all work slightly differently and in most cases including with V-Ray there's no way to just re-render the Z buffer only so it comes in handy to be able to uh, make your own so that you can make changes quickly and there are sometimes it's uh, uh, required that you animate some of the distances um, with a Z buffer to get the right effect in post so uh, we're, this is obviously a Z buffer rendering and this is the final render uh, with the Z buffer applied in Photoshop to get us a little depth of field. So let's first look at how we set this file up and um, let's make this uh, Z buffer uh, file from scratch. So this is just a typical V-Ray scene. I've done plenty of tutorials on gamma correction and how I set up V-Ray so I'm not going to go through that right now. Um, but I am uh, lighting the scene with one light and then an HDR for the reflections and refractions. Um, so in order to uh, do a manual uh, Z buffer, we're going to have to switch to the default renderer and uh, do some different things with our lighting and uh, what have you. So let's let's do that right now. So I'm going to first save this as a different file. And uh, we're going to first delete our light source. I'm going to change renderers from V-Ray to the max standard renderer. Okay, we're going to turn off shadows, turn on Mitchell Netravala, and the global super sampling. We're going to turn that on as well. I'll explain that once we get into Photoshop. <coughs> now, from here we need to do a few more things. Uh, one is uh, everything needs to have the same material which in this case let's let this load here, reset these real quick uh, is just going to be all white not self illuminated uh, we're going to call this Z buffer. Okay we're going to make it all white no specularity. Oops that's black not white do the opposite. All right. Then we are going to go to environment and we're going to set the ambient light level to white. This effect is achieved with lighting and um, fall off so we're going to just use an omni. We're going to line that omni up to our camera which I hid. Okay so I'm going to line up so the Omni is sitting directly on the camera. We don't need shadows. We do need to set up our attenuation. This defines uh, our Z buffer ranges. So the outer one, uh, you know, this totally depends on where you want your depth of field, but in this case I want my depth of field encompassing the necklace. So my far range is going to go right to the end of the necklace and my close range is going to butt right up against the very first object that comes closest to my camera. All right. The last thing we need to do here is we need to set our light to ambient only. Now if we hit render, we don't see anything because I forgot to turn on the frame buffer. Oh, there, that's on. Okay. <coughs> now you can see what's happening here is that uh, we're not seeing the ground object and that's because in this particular case I'm using a, uh, a V-Ray object, the plane. So I'm going to delete that, or actually I'm going to make a plane first and then delete it. So I'm going to align it to the plane so it sits in the same 3D space. We'll delete that plane. Uh, we need to give our floor that same material. And then we need to, we're just going to make it really big. The other one was set to infinite, so that's why we're doing that. Alright. 
try this again. Alright, still not working. Did set my ranges, ambient only. Ah, my light source is set to 1, it should be negative 1. Alright, now we're in business. Okay, now the effect you get uh, looks like the whole scene is black and is being fogged out by white, which is correct. Okay, so we're going to save this as our Z buffer. And I'm just saving this as a Targa file. <coughs> okay, we'll save this file. Now we're going to go into After Effects, or excuse me, Photoshop. I'm going to grab the two renders we just did. So our uh, necklace render and our Z buffer. Let these two load. <coughs> EXR takes a second. Okay, here we go. Alright, so what we're going to do in the case of Photoshop is we're going to select all, copy. We're going to go to the necklace rendering, go to channels, add a new channel, and then paste that Z buffer into alpha 1. Okay, now when we do that, we also, in order to access all of the various Photoshop plugins, we need to reduce this from 32 bits to 16. We're not going to merge. Then we're going to add the uh, lens blur. <coughs> so you can see the uh, lens blur is already dialed in my alpha 1, but if I said none, it blurs the whole image. If I go to my alpha 1, then it's queuing off of that Z buffer. <coughs> and um, you can see if we increase the radius, obviously we get more blur way in the back. Uh, if we pull that back down to something a little more interesting. If we adjust the focal distance, you can see it moves that blurring towards the front. You see what it's doing? It's moving it closer to us. Go all the way. You see now this is all focused and this is unfocused. So this is a huge time saver, but there is a caveat in this area, uh, which requires just a little bit more smoothing or perhaps uh, not such a strong effect. You see if we pull it back just a little bit, it looks a little more realistic. Um, and then we hit OK. And so that is the setup for Photoshop uh, using an EXR, or excuse me, using a Z buffer to control our depth of field. Now let's look at the same thing in After Effects. It's done slightly differently. And we'll go into After Effects here. I think I can just drag and drop these two images here. Okay. Now we'll go into our timeline, drop them on here. Okay. Uh, we're just going to turn off the Z buffer. Okay. Now we just see our EXR render. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the lens blur. Okay. You see right now it's blurring the entire image, however we can go up here to the settings and choose to base that blurring off our Z buffer. And you can see immediately it does the same thing that we did in Photoshop. And it actually, I think, looks a little better in After Effects than it does in Photoshop. You can see in this transitional area it looks a lot smoother than it did in, in Photoshop. Um, and then you can do some different things. Obviously we can control the amount of blur. And you can see we start to get this halo effect when we do something really really big, but if I pull that back, it looks a little more realistic. You'll also, um, if this were a lighter image, in fact, you can look here on the right-hand side, you can see as I blur it out, there's a black line around the edge. You can fix that by turning on repeat edge pixels. You see that gets rid of all of that. And uh, 
then the last thing is our focal distance. So if we dial in something like this, <coughs> and then we do our distance, you can see it's doing what it was doing in Photoshop. It's moving that blur from the back of the image to the front of the image. And again, I, there's a little bit of uh, issue there in the transition. I think it looks better in the back. Um, and that is it. Of course, all of these things can be animated. And you can also use this technique uh, with animation. However, you do have to set up two different files, one for your animation and one for your Z buffer. I hope this was helpful, and we will talk to you again soon.